And so it's really important that when we when we think of this act of David, that rightly so, he was he was full of joy. He was enthralled with the fact that he was able to bring God's presence into his house, into his city. And that's what happens here. It's the presence of God in this place. Do you understand that? The presence of God comes in a special way in the Eucharist. That's why I've said to people to go and, and investigate. Go to other Eucharists in other places where you're not familiar with the people and concentrate on what's going on in the Eucharist so that you get a feel outside of what you know as normal from the point of view of being familiar with your circumstances. Go somewhere where you're not familiar and just be present in the Eucharist and, and allow yourself to engage in the mystical aspects of the Eucharist and to look for Christ in the Eucharist. Look for Christ in what's going on in the Eucharist. And, and just find the presence of Christ and understand that the Eucharist is something special, very special. It's the focal point. And where the Protestant idea was where the word become the most important thing in the service and therefore the pulpit suddenly become the central point in churches that were built up after the Reformation that in the apostolic faith that we purport to be following the Eucharist the, the altar is central that is what is central because that is where Christ comes and meets with us in a special way of course Christ is the word and you know when we have the word in us that is very powerful and that's that's important to us but when we take the Eucharist we are literally taking Christ into ourselves in a physical way and therefore we should we should gain something very, very important from that. We should be feeling and believing that we are being healed through that. <clears throat> Physically, mentally, psychologically, this is a healing process. This is life and breath for us. This is, this is bread for the Christian. This is where we live. This is where we touch base with God. This is where we engage with a living God, a living Christ, who was raised from the dead. Of course he's no longer on the cross. We depict him on the cross, he's no longer there, he's in heaven. But that's something important for us to remember, that he was nailed to the cross for us in our place and his broken body is broken for us in the Eucharist and then we become Eucharist to the people we become broken for the people in service we become a royal priesthood to the people we become salt and light we become the bread the body of Christ, <coughs> broken, that goes out into the community to minister to others. We become the blood of Christ that goes out to others and spreads the gospel that that blood might just spread out and cover more. We become Eucharist. And we can't become Eucharist unless we take Eucharist seriously, unless we take Christ seriously and have that reverence for Christ. And so there, there is that psychological 
movement that we need to take towards Christ and towards the altar where we hold the Eucharist. So we have a respect when we move around the altar. And it's not just gimmicks and rules that we do, it's just a respect. If people bow, if people come and, and kneel down and pray and you know, just you know, out of a, a matter of respect and reverence for God, that this is the place where we're going to hold that communion service that Christ gave us to heal us, for us to, to engage with, and touch, touch God, to know the presence of God. And so it becomes special, and so that's why it becomes very reverential, and you have a feeling of the atmosphere changing around the altar. And while we spend time and effort trying to make the sanctuary area special for God, because God is present in the Eucharist in a special way. You can meet God anywhere. You don't have to go to church to meet God. You know? You don't have to be in church. It doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. But a Christian wants to be with other Christian people and wants to worship God with other Christians and will get a blessing, a special blessing, by being together with other Christians, where two or three are gathered together in my name, Christ says, I will be there with you. And it's a special way. And holding Eucharist when two or three are gathered together or more is a special place for God to presence himself with us. And we gain the blessings of that. So let's not take it lightly. Let's get out of the Protestant mindset that is so prejudiced and cynical against anything that could smack of Rome at all. Let's get back to what the historic church did in Catholicism, the universal Catholic, universal church, not the Roman Catholic, but the universal Catholic church. That's what we are. We are Catholics in the true sense of the word. We are part of the body of Christ around the world and also those who have gone before that look down upon us with the angels in heaven. And they're all rejoicing with us today. Whenever we hold the Eucharist, the saints in heaven and the angels are rejoicing with us when we come together and worship God. Christ is elevated. Christ has given a special place in our service and in our hearts. And so we need to do that. Okay. That was all about David dancing before the Lord. And David had a heart after God. And David just rejoicing before God and trusting God that he was going to get a blessing before, for God from God through the presence of God in the ark signified symbolically with the ark was going to bring something special back to the city of David they'd lost it before it'd been taken away and he brought it back something special so there is an element whereby we can physically do things for God which helps us psychologically and spiritually we engage with God in the same way that the woman who touched who reached out to touch God in sense he, she reached out and tried to touch the garment of Christ we are setting up a sanctuary we are opening up the Eucharist to come and touch God and be healed